Hey, what's going on everybody? Uh, Nate here again. Uh, I'm going to do a video on the Mira home controller integrated in with the uh, NetAtmo personal weather station. So just this is going to be a quick video on how to hook the two devices together, how to get them to talk, uh, how to grab readings from the weather station and do things inside of your home controller uh, with those values. So pretty straightforward. <coughs> so let's get to it. Uh, inside of your browser, my browser. Uh, this is the device I use as a Vera Plus Advanced Home Controller. You can get it from getvera.com. Um, the device is fairly simple uh, to set up once it's in set up. Uh, and once it's been installed and set up on your network, um, you can add other devices to it and control stuff from there. That's uh, did a video yesterday. So look at that one. Um, but in regards to the NetAtmo weather station, this is the NetAtmo. Uh, it's netatmo.com. Uh, they have a uh, indoor and outdoor module, uh, rain gauge, wind gauge. Um, I've only got the weather station with the rain gauge. Uh, when it's installed and working, you can see when you log into your account, it shows the values. For the outdoor and the indoor module, outdoor shows air quality is um, moderate, 67, 70 forecast is right here, temperature and humidity, rain gauge, indoor comfort level, uh, the indoor module has temperature, humidity, pressure, CO2, and a sound uh, meter. So and you can see all those values here over time, normally it's for that day, so it starts at 12 a.m. Uh, kind of cool though is you can choose the week. We can look at it from a month view or even from a year view, you know, to see, let's see, uh, where's outdoor temperature? Here's outdoor temperature. So from January, you can see, um, I'm sorry, that's humidity, outdoor temperature. So these are the highs, these are the lows. So in January, uh, the high on the 8th was 57 degrees, low 27. Lowest it's been is 10 on January 25th. On mom's birthday. Uh, highest it's been was June 19th, uh, 90, almost 95 degrees up here in Big Bear, and the lowest 55.2. So, kind of a neat uh, weather station. It shows the wireless signal on the indoor base, outdoor module, and rain gauge. Their wireless signals um, with also the batteries, you know, what the battery levels are on those outdoor modules, because those are uh, just I think the AA batteries, but they, they last a long time. I've never, I think I've changed them once in the few years that I've had this thing. So it works really well. So you're probably wondering what's the point of having the NetAtmo work with your Vera controller. So the Vera controller, if we come over here, when you add the under apps on the left column, you can install apps. So if you search for net atmo, you can see that that's an app that's available to be installed. It shows a check mark because I've already installed it. If you haven't installed it, there'll be a button that says install. Once it's installed on your devices, it will show up and normally it's going to show in as an error that it's not communicating. And that's obvious because how does it know how does the Vera know, just because you've installed the plugin, what the NetAtmo is showing or stating? Excuse me. So there is a connection there between the two. So you have to choose uh, from within the NetAtmo. Uh, there's an option here for uh, advanced. Uh, when you go into advanced, a lot of the stuff you just disregard. You know, I don't even know what most of this stuff means, to be honest with you. Uh, there is a tab here called variables. Uh, when you click on variables, there are some values that you have to place in here. Um, obviously, username. So you're going to click this little switch to input type text. Uh, and then you'll type in your username. Uh, password, you'll do the same thing. You'll type switch to input type text and type in your password. Now, that username and password is your username and password that you use to log into your NetApp, um, the website. Uh, there's two other values here. One of them is a client ID, uh, which is just a long string of gibberish, and so is the client secret. Uh, it's just a big long string of characters. 
these two values, I mean, obviously you'll know the username and password up above because that's your username and password for your NetAtmo account. But to get to your client ID and client secrets, you have to go to another website. Uh, the address or URL to that is dev, D -E -V, dot netatmo.com forward slash my account. And that'll take you to this page here where you can choose your Netatmo device. Uh, and when you scroll down, you'll see, uh, I'm not going to scroll all the way down so it doesn't unmask uh, my client ID and client secret. Uh, but that's what these values are here. You're, you're not seeing the first part of it. It's, it's it's hidden behind my video. So, but these values, you just copy them to your clipboard. Come back over to um, your viewer controller. Uh, client ID, you would just come and paste. And go back to the site. Copy your client secret. Come back over here, paste it in. Uh, and then just click away. There's no apply or OK buttons on this screen. So you just click away from those fields. And then um, normally that's going to get your connection between the viewer controller and the NetAdmo. Once that's done, when you go to the devices, you'll then have the NetAdmo, NetAdmo icon with this little green thing stating that there's a connection. And I'll show you when it was last updated. Once that's in place and it's talking, it then adds additional modules, which you can see down here in the room that I named Weather Station. So humidities, temperatures, um, pressures, dust, noise decibels, blah, blah, blah. So those will come in once the accounts are talking, once they're connected. So once the connect connection exists, now you can utilize those values from the weather station to do things with your controllable devices. Um, an example of that is, I'm going to delete this one because I made this one earlier. Uh, I'll create a new scene here in a second. I'll kind of uh, give an explanation of what the scenes do. Um, a scene is something that can be triggered manually. It can be triggered by a device's value, um, or you can set it on a schedule where things run routinely. Uh, I'm not going to get into any of my scenes that I have here. I did that on my prior video. Um, but a scene in regards to something with the NetApp model could be, um, I actually have two down here. So the one that says temp above 75 office fan off means that if the outside module, the outside sensor, um, if the temperature goes above 75 degrees in the shade, my office fan in the window, I want that fan to turn off. Because if it's getting that warm outside, potentially it's going to start blowing that hot air into my office. I don't want that. So and it's, it's also in the reverse. You know, if I'm sitting here in the evening and the temperature's cooling off outside and I have my fan on, if it gets below 65 degrees outside, turn that fan off. I don't want that cold air on, you know, blowing in here. So I already have two set up. So I'm going to set up another one just to give an example of something you could do in regards to CO2 levels. So when you look at the NetAtmo weather station, uh, the indoor base or the indoor module has a CO2 sensor. So you can see right now it's green. It's 629 parts per million. So 629 is okay, 1,000, 1,500 is normally okay. Um, they state with the NetAtmo when it reaches about 2,000 parts per million, it's not going to kill you, but it's not, they consider it's unhealthy air quality. You know, there's not enough fresh air. So this right now looks good. Um, so you can create a scene using that um, value from within the, um, the rear controller to you know, turn on um, a window fan. Let's pull some fresh air in from outside. So I'm going to do that under Scenes. Uh, I'm going to click Add a Scene, and we're going to do it by device. Not a schedule or manually run it. It's based on a device. So we hit this little arrow here to select the device. And we're going to choose the indoor base CO2. And we're going to choose this. Metric goes above 2,000 ppm. We're going to validate that step. And then we're going to create uh, a new step. So what do you want to have happen? 
So once the CO2 goes above 2,000 ppm, what's going to take place with some of the automation systems that you may have? So we're going to select the device, office fan. We're going to click Next. What do we want that office fan to do when it reaches 2,000 ppm? We want the fan to turn on. So we validate that step. Click Next. And then also I'm going to notify these people. So because my wife Jody and I have accounts in our Vera controller, I can choose these two accounts. Click Done. I'm going to set this to Main because it's kind of a house scene. And I'm going to say CO2 over 2000 ppm office and on. Finish. So that's it. That's how basic it was for me to set that up. So realistically though, CO2 level will not reach 2000 ppm with my wife and I here. Uh, even with the house completely closed up. Um, if we go back to the cabin, if we look at uh, CO2 for last night, you can see last night with the house completely closed up. Uh, with my wife and I here, it never reached 1,000. You know, when we opened the windows and started pulling air in, obviously the air quality uh, improves. Uh, but the, for it to reach 2,000, that, that's going to take, um, I've seen it get there before. Um, it normally takes the house in the wintertime completely closed up, fire in the fireplace, and about six to eight people here in the house or in the area where the sensor's at. You'll reach probably 2,000 ppm. Um, so that's, that's how that works. So there's a lot of cool things you can actually do, but I'm, I'm not going to get into some of that. I'll just give you an idea. There's a, a uh, IF, what is it, if, and then this something. I don't use the site anymore. But there's a IFTT, if this, then that, where you can do some integration with an Atmo as well in your Hughes Phillip bulbs. So you can actually set um, where if your NetAtmo CO2 sensor reaches 2,000 uh, parts per million, turn on a light in the house and set the light to a red color. You know, so a lot of different things that you can do. But that's a whole different video that I'm not going to do. <laughs> so um, another cool thing that you can do with this uh, integration between NetAtmo and Vera is using the indoor temperature sensor. So on the dashboard we can see the indoor temp right now is 74.7. Um, if you have a home that has roller shutters or blinds that are motorized with Z-Wave control where those devices have been included into your mirror controller, you can monitor the indoor temperature. So you can say um, you can create a scene that says at 6 a.m. open all my blinds. Open up the house and let that light in. Um, but as the day goes on and that light is coming into your home and that heat is coming into your home, the indoor base temperature will go up. So you can say if indoor base temperature reaches 76 degrees, shut down or close you know, all those blinds. So you can use those sensors for those functions as well. Um, I don't have any blinds set up here at this uh, location, so I really can't give uh, a full demonstration of that scene setup. But it'd be something similar to this: uh, add scene uh, device. We select the device as uh, indoor base temperature it goes above, say, 76 degrees. We'll validate that. We'll go next step. Select the devices. So this is where. Had you included those shutters into your system, um, I'm going to use these as examples. That's not what they are, but you know, family room blinds, master bedroom blinds, dining room blinds. You would select those three, click Next on the next screen. It's going to ask you, what do you want those devices to do? Do you want those blinds to open or close? So you choose them all to be closed. Uh, validate, give it a name, put it in a room. Uh, once you do that. Uh, then what will happen is when that indoor sensor reaches 76 degrees, all of your blinds in your house will close to help keep that uh, sun and heat from coming into the house and making the house even warmer. One thing you can also do is um, I have a thermostat that's Z-Wave controllable. 
So you can use this device as well uh, to control blinds because I have an insight reading here. Um, so I can use my NetAtmo indoor module um, or I can use the thermostat. So you can do that based on scenes and yeah, and I'll show you that using my thermostat. I can say it's a device, click next. We're going to choose my thermostat. Uh, whenever the thermostat uh, ambient temperature goes above, right here, 76 degrees, validate that step. So now my thermostat in my house, not the net ammo, but the thermostat, if the ambient temperature on the thermostat goes above 76 degrees, well, that's when you add the next steps. Close these blinds, those blinds. So a lot of control that you can do with the, the Vera home controller, um, as well as the uh, integration with the NetAtmo weather station. So that's um, about the, the gist of this video. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to cut it um, at this point. There's not a, really a whole lot more to go over. Uh, if you have a Vera home controller and you have a NetAtmo weather station and you're trying to get the integration between the two work and you're having issues, feel free to uh, message me or comment below. And uh, I'll do what I can to help. So thanks for watching, folks, and we'll see you on the next video.